Hi, welcome to another episode of MID Global. I'm your host, Leanne Hackman Carty. In today's episode, I'm speaking with Jocelyn West with the Natural Hazard Center in Boulder, Colorado. Jocelyn's doing some research from a sociological standpoint on hazards. In particular, she's done a lot of work with landslides in Puerto Rico. So stay tuned as I talk to Jocelyn about some of the work they're doing with respect to helping communities prepare better, mitigate better, and give them tools that they can actually refer to to make their life easier. So stay tuned. Hi, Jocelyn. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Hey, before we get started, could you tell the audience just a little bit about yourself, about your professional background, your personal background? Absolutely. Um, so again, my name is Jocelyn West. I am currently a research assistant at the Natural Hazard Center, which is at the University of Colorado Boulder. And I'm also doing a PhD in sociology at the same university, uh, where I mostly focus on the sociology of disasters. And my background, though, is actually in geology. So I started out studying natural hazards from the perspective of an earth scientist. And then I worked for six years in natural hazards research, but also in international development, most recently at the World Bank in Washington, DC, where I really focused on risk communication and how we communicate about natural hazards and disasters. And so I'm kind of continuing that research now in grad school. That's great. Well, I think someday we'll come back and circle back with you on those topics. Uh, but our topic today, uh, just tell me a little bit about the Natural Hazard Center. What kind of work you do there? Definitely. The Natural Hazard Center is a truly interdisciplinary place, um, but it's basically a research institute that was started in 1976, um, founded by Gilbert White, uh, who is known by some as, as kind of the, the father of floodplain management, at least in the United States. Um, and since then, um, it's been supported by the National Science Foundation or NSF to be basically a clearinghouse for natural hazards uh, research and, and knowledge. So it's always had a mission to really make that type of research of use to the public um, and also be like a center of that, that knowledge. Um, and the, the Institute, hosts the Natural Hazards Workshop, which is one of the longest running um, basically workshops or, or conferences on disaster research. And it really brings together not just researchers, but practitioners who work in emergency management or focus on disasters in, in other ways. Um, together once a summer, um, we've been having it virtually last year and again this year, unfortunately, but um, I, I definitely recommend it to anybody in this field who has an interest in, in learning more about these topics. Um, and so my work there, the Natural Hazard Center really most recently has been taking more of a social science approach to studying natural hazards, which kind of makes it unique um, compared to some other institutes that might focus on disasters from a more engineering or um, earth science perspective. But um, a lot of the research covers every type of hazard or disaster you might think of, um, including our project on landslides in Puerto Rico. I think it's interesting because, we, you know, everyone comes at this from a different angle. And you mentioned it, like whether you come from earth science, whether you come from an emergency management, I come at it from an economic development standpoint. So there's all these different angles and together you get such a great um, understanding. It's when you're siloed and you kind of only see it by your perspective that it limits you on how you see things. Um, so you mentioned Puerto Rico. With your background in geology, uh, obviously landslides would be something that you would understand from that perspective. Uh, tell me about the work you guys are doing in the area of landslides. Sure, so I think the way we tend to talk about this project starts with the, the way we kind of formed our team in order to start working on um, the challenge of landslides in Puerto Rico. And landslides were really brought to the attention of actually the US Geological Survey, who is one of the key partners of uh, the Natural Hazard Center on this project. Um, and so I work very closely with some scientists there. And so the USGS 
started out by doing scientific research to basically count and inventory the 70,000 landslides that happened in Puerto Rico that were triggered by rainfall during Hurricane Maria in 2017. And that's just a, an immense amount of landslides that covered basically um, a lot of the interior mountains in Puerto Rico. And um, I think just the scale of it caught the attention of um, definitely the geologists and, and other earth science uh, researchers and practitioners at the USGS, but they wanted to go beyond um, the geology research on that topic and partnered with our team at the Natural Hazard Center uh, in order to think about how do we actually translate this science into information that the public can use in Puerto Rico. Um, and so at the beginning of that project, after some kind of initial scouting and research, we actually formed like a three-part team with the University of Puerto Rico Mayagüez. And so my colleagues, Raquel and Yajaira, are um, our research assistants on the project from the geology department at uh, the University of Puerto Rico. And so the three of us have worked together to um, kind of build a network among meteorologists and other emergency managers in Puerto Rico to kind of pool the existing knowledge about preparedness and mitigation for landslides in Puerto Rico and turn that into um, a very like graphic and image focused guide to preparing for and responding to landslides for um, just residents who live in Puerto Rico and, and are exposed to these events. So would, uh, and I'll put a link to that guide in on the description of the video, but just curious, do you think that this guide is specific to Puerto Rico or is it valuable to other communities who are dealing with uh, landslides as a risk as well? I do, I do think that the guide is, is certainly transferable to other contexts that are particularly affected by landslides. Um, we have the hope that this information uh, which was developed in Spanish first, the Spanish language first, and also so is now uh, provided in Spanish and English. Um, and that was important for the context of Puerto Rico. Um, but we believe that it's particularly transferable to other Caribbean islands that have similar uh, patterns of, of rainfall and climate and are susceptible to um, hurricanes, but also have a similar um, geology but also the same language. So somewhere like um, the Dominican Republic, it has, has been brought up as um, a case in which this landslide guide could be really useful. Um, but we also know that after the wildfires in the Western United States, for instance, in this last year, um, a, lot of those, <laughs> a lot of those areas are now very susceptible to landslides whenever they experience a lot of rainfall because all of the vegetation that was securing those slopes is, is gone um, or is, is really weakened. So there are a lot of um, Spanish speaking populations in some of those areas too. And so we think a lot of the principles of how to prepare for and mitigate landslides are the same um, in these contexts. But I will say as a caveat, we really tried to develop this guide um, culturally to fit the context of Puerto Rico so that the um, types of information about um, what to do with your house, for instance, was really specific to the kinds of houses that are most common in Puerto Rico. So those are the types of small things where if we wanted to really make this guide applicable everywhere, everywhere we might make adjustments to some of the like examples in the, in the guide itself. Yeah, well, I think that's great. I'm, I'm glad you did this work and that I can hopefully share it with others because I think, you know, I, when you mentioned the California wildfires, I think a lot of people understand fires, but they didn't think afterwards, oh, then what happened was, you know, all this land slid in the mud and, and it can be just as devastating as well. Like you just don't think of it as, as, a, as a hazard that's very common, but I would assume uh, when you say those numbers in Puerto Rico, it's very common. <laughs> <laughs> so having those some tools to, to rely on it is they're fantastic. Just as we wrap up, is there anything else perhaps that you wanted to mention that I didn't ask about? Sure. I think I'd like to mention that that looking ahead, I'm personally thinking about 
uh, just kind of the, the social context around landslides. So as you mentioned, we don't necessarily hear about them very often because, um, well, I'm trying to answer the question of why we don't hear about them very often. Um, and some of the answers to that question so far are because they tend to happen in rural areas and affect more yeah. rural populations. Um, and so some of my research going forward is, is just really looking at like what, what makes um, somebody particularly vulnerable to a landslide? Um, and so what are the kinds of um, characteristics of the populations who might be most likely to be affected by a landslide? And what are the specific needs that they have uh, when it comes to information or emergency assistance or mitigation assistance? Um, but landslides have been a challenge because there's kind of a lack of data about them um, because they're typically thought of as like a secondary hazard. Um, yeah. They're thought of as something that's caused by something else. So um, a lot of the damages from landslides in Hurricane Maria are just attributed to the hurricane. Um, so we don't really get the detail about this was caused by a landslide versus this was caused by flooding. Um, and so moving forward, um, some of my colleagues at the USGS and, and I are trying to make more of a case for collecting better data about the impacts of landslides um, so that we can continue to do research on um, the needs of people affected by this hazard. That's great. Well, Jocelyn, thank you very much for taking a few minutes today to talk about your work and the important research you're doing and uh, wishing you all the best. Thank you, and likewise, please take care. Thank you.